Hey guys, this is Tom Warren from The Verge, and we're here to look at Office for iPhone today. We're not running this particular app on an iPad, and there's good reason for that. Uh, Microsoft's only releasing an iPhone version today uh, that works exclusively with Office 365 accounts. So you'll need to sign into your Office 365 account, and then the first thing you'll notice is just how basic this application really is. And um, you can see the recent documents initially, and then you can tab across to the uh, files, which obviously gives you access to your SkyDrive. There's also a new tab that provides access to creating Word and Excel documents, uh, but you can't create a PowerPoint from there. Um, and the settings, they're really simple. Um, you can literally just add your name in for comments um, and access stuff like the help and support center um, and the sort of terms of use and privacy. So really simple stuff. Every time you navigate back to the recent section, it should refresh from SkyDrive to provide the latest edited documents. And viewing a document is really simple. You just tap on it, um, it goes in, and the default view lets you pan around the document with all the changes kept intact. Um, also, all the images are there and the text formatting. Um, there's also options to share and save a copy of the document alongside some editing tools. Um, now, the editing tools are where this gets a little bit confusing, to say the least. Um, you can simply tap on the editing tools option at the top, which gives you text input initially. Um, and then you can select words in the document to manipulate the colors. Um, but it's not obvious how to select text initially. Um, and you have to actually double tap on a word to get the normal iOS options to select like multiple words. Um, and then you can get to the editing tools and change the fonts, etc. So if we double tap on a word here, you know, so I have to edit the, uh, go to the editing options. Um, and then we've got like the colors, um, bold, italics, all, all the sorts of basic stuff. Um, you can also change the size of the font, um, but that's pretty much it. If you want to go back, you have to click on the little arrow um, to get back. There's no real quick, easy way to um, switch between view and edit. There's also a viewing tools option that lets you quickly pan through the document or find text within it. A final option is available to place comments on a document simply by double tapping on a word. And once you leave the document, um, you can then save or discard changes and they'll all be saved directly to SkyDrive, allowing you to access and edit documents from the full desktop version of Office, Office web apps or another mobile device. Next up is Excel. Um, now I found manipulating data here and selecting cells really difficult on the small screen of the iPhone. Uh, once you get the hang of it, and then you can quickly like jump directly into the edit tools, and then you can create charts based on those cells. Um, Microsoft has included these sort of usual tabs at the bottom here, so you can quickly be uh, switch between the spreadsheet and the, the chart data. There's even the ability to edit single cells and change formulas, etc. It's kind of useful if you're on the go and you want to amend a mistake in the spreadsheet quickly. Um, like Word, you can also go into the editing tools and change the colors and fonts, and there's also options specific to Excel. There's also an option to create filters on this mobile version of Office. You can select an entire range of cells and then access the viewing tools to apply a filter that will then let you filter individual columns. Um, it's super useful if you're a heavy spreadsheet user who filters out columns regularly, but for most power users they'll likely do this type of manipulation on a desktop version of Office. In terms of selecting cells, I eventually found that dragging from the center provided the best results, but initially it's a really frustrating experience. And the viewing tools are rather limited again, um, but there's also an option to search through the spreadsheet for a specific text. And once you leave the spreadsheet, you'll be prompted to save changes and the document will sync up to SkyDrive. The final Office for iPhone application is PowerPoint. At first you're greeted with options to flick through and view a presentation, but there's also a viewing option at the top to quickly navigate to individual slides. However, overall I found this to be one of the most basic in terms of editing and manipulation. There's an edit option, but it doesn't really let you do much. You can select existing text on the PowerPoint document and change the contents, but there's no control over its color or style. There are also options to move or hide slides. Overall, it looks like this is really designed for last minute changes to PowerPoint presentations, rather than the full way to edit them. You can also get the usual file options to share and save. If you use the app in landscape mode, you'll also be able to view the presentation fully and access the speaker note options. You can add in basic notes and they'll sync up with your document changes. And this view is more of a presentation mode, really, um, and it lets you sort of pan around the document and uh, zoom in too. And like all the apps before it, any changes that you make will be uh, synced fully up to SkyDrive. Overall, Office for iPhone is really basic. We'd love to see some changes to allow for images to be swapped in and out, and just to make text editing a little less confusing. But for now, it's a free application that comes part of Office 365. Microsoft has no plans to open this up outside of that subscription, and iPad users will have to make do with the web app versions of Office for now.